So today we're going to look at a whole body and I'm going to discuss three major components of lymph node drainage. These are going to be broken down into segments, but the overarching theme today is that you need to know which part of the body drains to which lymph nodes. This is a highly, highly, highly tested topic on step one because there are very clear-cut drainage pathways and they are very well documented. Students tend to put lymph drainage off. They figure that they can guess based on is this lymph node close to this body part, but it doesn't always turn out to work in that kind of one-to-one -one correlation. So if you can just take a couple minutes today and get all this information down, it really will go a long way for you. So we're gonna get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the superficial inguinal nodes. Now, I've drawn in a red dotted line. Now, what I want you to think about in your head is that that red dotted line crosses over the umbilicus or the belly button. Everything south of that red dotted line for the most part, will drain to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Now those superficial inguinal lymph nodes are found along the distribution of the thick green lines that I've drawn in on this body. Now there are two exceptions to this rule that you need to be aware of. The superficial inguinal lymph nodes will drain everything below the belly button all the way down to the feet with the exception of two places. One are the gonads. The other exception are the lateral foot, okay? So there are two exceptions, the gonad and the lateral foot. But everything else below the umbilicus all the way down will drain to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Now it's gonna be easy to remember one of the exceptions. It's gonna be easy to remember that the gonads don't drain to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes and that'll become more clear as we go through this video. But as for the other exception, as for that lateral ankle or that lateral foot, you kinda of have to just memorize that. But let me give you the mnemonic to remember the superficial inguinal lymph node drainage points. What I want you to think about is that it drains everything south of an innie. Of course, when I say any, I'm referring to an any belly button. You know how they always say, are you an any or you are outy? Well, everything south of an any, SI for superficial inguinal, drains to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes found near the groin. All right, so just in review so far, superficial inguinal lymph nodes drain everything below our belly button all the way down to our feet with the exception of two regions. One, it does not drain the gonads. Two, it does not drain the lateral ankles or the lateral foot. Um, th those areas go to different points. While we're here, I'm going to mention them because they're not on the slide, but the lateral ankle or the lateral foot will drain to the popliteal lymph nodes behind our knees, and the gonads will drain to the next thing that we're going to talk about, which is the paraaortic lymph nodes. Now, paraaortic lymph nodes are found, as the name suggests, paraaortically, which just means on the sides of the aorta. Uh, the, the abdominal aorta. So what you can think about here is that I've drawn in this blue line that represents the aorta running down through the abdominal uh, content and it drains the gonads. The gonads are of course drawn in as two nice big blue balls. So the mnemonic for remembering that the paraaortic lymph nodes drain the gonads or the testicles is that the paraaortic lymph nodes drains the penis anchors. So you can think about those two big testicles or those two big blue balls as being the penis anchors. And penis anchors, PA, for paraaortic lymph nodes. So in review so far, first we touched on the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. We said that everything below the belly button all the way down to the feet with the exception of the gonads and the lateral ankle drained to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes found near the groin. We said that those lymph nodes on the lateral ankle drain to the popliteal lymph nodes behind our knee. And we said that the gonads, or the penis anchors, PA, drain to the paraaortic lymph nodes found on either side of the abdominal aorta. So, so far, so good. We've already covered over half the body and where it drains. The other things that we need to keep in mind are on this slide. Now, the, let me start with point number two, actually. I'll go a little bit out of order here. Regional lymph drainage usually follows blood supply. Now what that means is if you're on a test and they ask you, um, let's say that they describe small bowel and you know that we're talking about some part of the small bowel that's in the distribution of the middle mesenteric artery. If they ask you which lymph node drains 
that region of the body or that organ, the answer usually follows the blood supply. So here's an example. The inferior mesenteric nodes will drain the inferior mesenteric artery distribution. So we're talking about something like the descending colon. If they ask you what drains the descending colon, well, that's the inferior mesenteric nodes because the inferior mesenteric artery is the blood supply to that region. So if you have to take an absolute guess, more often than not, especially when we're talking about GI organs, the lymph node drainage follows the arterial supply to the region. And that's a very high yield point to be aware of, not only because, um, not only because it helps you better organize things in your head, but because if you're in an exam and you have to take a guess, this is the one uh, situation situation where you definitely can take an educated guess based on arterial supply. The other point to be aware of is that the thoracic outlet is the common exit point for all of the lymph drainage in the body. The reason that this is high yield is because there's something called thoracic outlet syndrome, where if you obstruct or somehow interfere with the thoracic outlet, which is found kind of near the first rib on the upper left side of the thorax, if you obstruct the thoracic outlet, you're going to have the classic symptoms of lymph congestion and fluid overload and inability to maintain that fluid homeostasis in the body. And this is a kind of an osteopathic DO friendly diagnosis because this shows up on Comlex all the time, but it does show up on USMLE as well. So I would just be aware that the thoracic outlet is the common exit point for the drainage of lymph in the body. So that's all I have for today. Next video coming up is going to be about pelvis and pelvic anatomy, but I hope that this was helpful and good luck studying.